Voice walk-ins is many things. A lot of those things to me are pejorative. I don't really care so much for voice walk-ins and I won't get into why that is. But sometimes voice walk-ins make sense. It's not often, but it is sometimes. And like my father would always say, a broken clock is still right twice a day. So Boyce Watkins has laid into the Kamala Harris debate, along with many other uh, well-known pro-blacks. Uh, Tariq Nasheed has been weighing on it, Dr. Umar Johnson, and Boyce Watkins has. Now, it's very interesting that all three of these guys, which they have different views of the black community, all agree on one thing. Kamala Harris is bad news. When it comes to the black vote, when it comes to the black vote for women, all of them are bad news. And when it comes to two of them, I mean, Tariq, you know, he respects women also. Uh, but when it comes to two of them, their audience is really promoted to black women. And that's really Boyce Watkins and Dr. Umar Johnson. And it takes a lot for Boyce Watkins or Dr. Umar to be critical of black women at all. Here's an example. So I got a really nice message from a brother who asked me, why do you listen to black women? He said, bro, you know, your platform's good for economics and you need to use your platform to support the brotherhood. Let the women have their own platforms and and uh, and, and you support the brotherhood. And I said, look, I support the brothers. I mean, y'all know I support the brothers. I'm always down for the black man, but my God, we need our women. We need our women. You know, I mean, look at how much they support us. I'm not talking about the toxic people. I'm not talking about the people that, that, you know, say things that don't make any sense. I'm talking about the women that really have our back. The women who gave birth to us. I mean, come on, man. What in the world would make us say that we don't need our women and we shouldn't support them as much as they support us? So let's keep this clear. I'm gonna always support black women, period. And I hope everybody else will agree with me on this. And I hope black men especially will speak up on this because we can't be having this nonsense out here, man. It, it makes us look terrible. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Peace. And then I want you guys to hear his criticism of Jonathan Majors as to why Jonathan Majors chose a black woman when he got in trouble. When everybody's kind of done with him, oh, he's bringing Megan Good with him to court. You know, and, 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 and citing racism as, as the reason for the accusation. Well, if, if your woman is racist, why would you be dating a racist anyway? What makes you think that marrying a Klansman is going to get you uh, to, to where you want to get to? Oh, oh, oh I, I understand. Maybe what you're doing is what a lot of people do in Hollywood, a lot of black folks in Hollywood that tend to rise to the top. If you look at their partner, it tells you a lot. You look at, or even if you look at the Supreme Court, who are the two black Supreme Court justices uh, right now? Clarence Thomas, Katanji Brown Jackson. Both of them on separate uh, sides of the aisle. One a Democrat, one a Republican. One went to Harvard, one went to Yale. One is a likable woman. The other is a horribly unlikable man. But neither one of them has a black spouse. Give me a yes or no. Do you think? This is something that is very, 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 very key. When things were bad, for Jonathan Majors, he got with Megan Good. Okay. Now his white girlfriend, Grace Jabari, is the one that pretty much ruined Jonathan Majors' career along with his own actions. But I want to deal with that because there's another popular black person married to a white person that's running for president. And this is Kamala Harris. Now, a lot of times, whenever you see prominent black men marry white women, Let's look at Eddie Murphy. When Eddie Murphy recently got married, it was so many black women that were upset at him for marrying that white woman. It was the same thing that we heard about Kobe Bryant. Now, some people were so upset, they said nasty things about Kobe Bryant's death simply because he had a Hispanic wife. We all know about Jay Ellis. You know, Jay Ellis, who was Lawrence from Insecure, it got so bad he had to shut down the comments on his Instagram because so many black women were reminding him that he got his money from the black community and the fan base that put him on were African-American. And I can understand all of those things because it does make sense. It's true, right? But they were holding him to task. And again, as a pro-black, I'm not upset with the community holding someone to task when you have benefited from the community in a financial way. I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, 
Same thing with Maxwell and other singers. Those people who built their career off of marketing to the black community are the black women. And then you come and disrespect black women with somebody else. Okay, I can understand why you're upset. But now what about Kamala Harris? Kamala Harris also marketed herself to the black community. Kamala Harris grew up in the East Bay in Oakland, went to Howard University. And if you can see Kamala Harris back in the 80s, Kamala Harris was looking like this. All right. That was Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris was down with the community. All right. She had the salt and pepper earrings, hairstyle, all of that. Then in the 90s, we saw Kamala Harris with Willie Brown and hanging out with Montel Williams. Guess what now? She didn't forgot all of that stuff. And now Kamala Harris is dating the white, or is married to the white man, or I don't know if he's a European Jewish, which is fine. But Kamala Harris still gets to keep her blackness. But Boyce Watkins points out something that is very important that black women don't want to listen to who support Kamala Harris. And that is this. When people try to tell me that the race of Kamala's husband doesn't matter, I ask a simple question. Would you have still supported Barack if he were married to Becky? Nothing against interracial marriage. It's in my own family. But choosing black means something. And see, that's what I want to deal with. And Boyce Watkins' own daughter married somebody that's white. So that's what he's talking about also. All right. But the fact is this. Barack Obama would have never been an, a U.S. president if Barack Obama had a white wife. First of all, Barack Obama wasn't even from our community. Barack Obama, his father is Kenyan. I believe Luo, if I'm not mistaken. And his mother is white. That is Barack Obama's heritage. His wife, Michelle Obama, is African-American. Without Michelle Obama, Barack Obama is just a overpriced lawyer. He doesn't even get into Illinois politics, politics or nothing. There is no way that a black man would have ever got black America to say, yes, we can with a white wife. We all know it. We know it's true. Black women would have never voted for Barack Obama. However, what they are showing now with the support of Kamala Harris, you can be a black woman, not even culturally be a black woman, not even be hashtag FBA. All right. And as long as black women, as it looks good for the group, you can have a white man. It's OK. Now, you can't be Amber Rose and a black woman. You can't do that. No, no, mm -mm. no, because you, now you're selling out because you're over there with Trump in it. But if you want to be Kamala Harris and you're married to a Jewish man or a white man, we can overlook that because why? That's where the power structure is. Those are the people that make all the moves. You see what I'm saying? Like for us as black men, if you have power and you're not willing to share your power with the women of your community, that's disrespect. I get it. But here's something that a lot of sisters are showing us right now. They can get power with another group and they don't owe you nothing at all. So on one, on the one end, as a black man with your success, you are in, you, you have to, you have to big us up. You have to also lift us up. And if you don't, we're going to criticize you. And if you don't, we're going to penalize you. Those behaviors and arguments are going to happen. But us, if we go out there and get another man to elevate us, we can we can still retain our blackness. There is no consequence for us. Even if we marry a white man that can't help us. I don't even think Kamala Harris's husband is as successful as her. Just like Serena Williams isn't as successful as her. But it brings her closer to whiteness. And this is something that a lot of black women are not talking about. And this, for some of them, I believe, is what they may actually desire. And a, 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 a closer shot at some more power. Marrying a white man or being close to that helps them achieve something that maybe they feel like they can't get from black men. And this is why if you're a black woman and you go that route, you're still black. But you're not still black if you're a black man and you do the same thing. You're no longer black. You're a sellout. You're a you're, you're a you're, you're a traitor to the race. All of these things and more you are. So, guys, what do you think? It's your boy, Shadey Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. I appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe the bell. We're out.